Hello everyone. Uh, so um, I said I might try to do this, and I am going to try to do this. Um, I'm going to try to do some video movie reviews. Um, now I don't have high tech, um, you know, animations or you know things that I can do like that, like professional movie re reviewers do. So. Um, most of my reviews will be PowerPoints with embedded clips from the movies, um, as, as I deem necessary. So, the first movie I'm going to review, I've seen it a thousand times, so I know it very well. Um, it's honestly one of my favorite movies. Doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with it. There, it, there are some flaws, and I will get to that. But um, it's Stephen King's Silver Bullet, 1985 which is based on his book, Cycle of the Werewolf. Um, and ironically, Stephen King did write the screenplay for this movie. So um, it was very interesting to see that I have not read the book, but the, uh, the movie was definitely entertaining. So uh, let's go along here. I, I have a very specific way of doing movie reviews. Very formatic, formulaic. So here's the plot and background in just one slide. So the director is Dan Attias, and the screenplay was written by Stephen King. Our main characters are Marty, who is a, a little 10, 10, 11 year old boy, Janie, his 15 year old sister, and Uncle Red. They're the main characters. The parents aren't really involved in this in the movie that much. Um, so in order, uh, Marty is played by Corey Haim. Janie's played by Tova Feldsha, and Uncle Red is played by Gary Busy. So, the first half of the movie, we just see the werewolf killing different people throughout the town. You know, there's the large body count. Um, it's supposed to be scary. If you've seen it enough times, it's not scary. Um, but, but if scary movies scare you, this will scare you. Uh, I'm just so immune to it by now that it doesn't scare me. So the second half is really where we get to the main storyline is when the werewolf tries to attack the little boy, Marty, on the bridge um, when he's shooting off fireworks. But uh, Marty is able to shoot the werewolf with a rocket and is able to escape. And I will show that clip later. And there's a very specific reason for that. And I'm, I'm not really spoiling anything here, I don't think, by saying, by saying that. So the rest is Marty trying to convince his uncle and sister that werewolves are and real and that he saw one, heard it, and now it wants to kill him. So now it's a game of trying to convince Uncle Red and his sister, please help me, please help me. I saw this werewolf and he's coming for me, I guarantee you. So for Marty, it's very difficult because obviously the, uh, his sister was a little more willing to believe Marty, but Uncle Red was not. Uncle Red thought that, you know, something else was going on and that Marty was not telling the truth or that he must have seen something else. So it becomes about that. And and the very exciting ending uh, occurs, but will not give anything else away. I'd love to, but I'm not going to do that because it is a very exciting ending. Okay, so that's the plot, and now here's my opinion on the plot. So, there were some main, some inexplainable things in the movie. I don't think it was with the writing. I think Stephen King actually did a good write, uh, writing job with the screenplay. Um, as I mentioned before, I think that the first half of the movie is a lot of fluff. It's really meant for just, you know, horror or scare quality to make you scared of the werewolf. It's not really there for any other reason. Um, and see, the problem with this is that it takes up the first half of the movie. So we are not introduced to the main plot until like 45 to 50 minutes into the, into the movie. And I just think that's too much time to take up with with uh, the build-up like that. I would say maybe 20 or 25 minutes uh, mentioned uh, spent on uh, the, the body counts, but 
uh, no more than that, you know, a quarter to a third, and then we go to the main, you know, reason for the movie, which is Marty and his sister and Uncle Red. Some scenes that were just very ridiculous, um, like there's a there's a somebody has a dream of uh, everybody turning into werewolves in the church. That was supposed to be scary. It's not. It's just ridiculous. And here we go. Second half, a lot more exciting because now we are narrowed in on the main characters whom the werewolf is after. So this is where the suspense, suspense really builds up and we really get invested in the movie. When he's randomly killing people in the beginning, I'm not really that invested in the movie that much. I mean, to me, I like blood and gore, so it is somewhat exciting, but I'm not really invested in the story or in the main characters. But by the second half, once we narrow it down to those three main characters, that's when the real story is, and that's when I become uh, invested. Uh, and I pretty much said everything here. Um, the dialogue between the main characters is quite entertaining at times, especially since Uncle Red doesn't believe it's true until the last minute and he decides to play Marty's game anyway. Um, so there are some funny commentary between Marty and his, and his uncle during the second half of the movie. So I thought that was well written. However, um, so for my rating for the plot is 8.5 out of 10. I'm deducting a point and a half due to the first half of the, of the movie. I, I just think it's overdone. Okay. Opinion on characters and the acting. So very simply, Marty. You know, the, I think the thing with him is that he, sh you know, he sees this werewolf, and he gets a, he gets away, and he's afraid of this werewolf that's going to come for him. But he's still very brave at the same time, and I think that's his main character development. You know, I always like to find a character development when I'm reviewing a movie. And I think his character development is that he his bravery level of bravery increases throughout. Um, his character is simply brave, um, develops over the length of the second half of the movie. Um, and his acting in general was really realistic. He did, when he needed to be terrified, he did seem terrified. He really seemed like he was trying to convince his Uncle Red. It, it was all believable to me. So I have no complaints about Corey Haim there. The actor who played uh, Janie, um, you know, what's important here is, you know, her relationship with her brother. And this is going to tie into the, one of the themes. Um, at first, it's not good. You know, Marty and his friends tease and berate her. However, going through this whole experience together has brought them much closer as family by the end. And her growing love for her brother is actually her character development. So her acting is pretty good. <laughs> when um, when necessary, she screams like bloody murder. And it's believable. It's not always believable, but here it is. And um, she, plays, <laughs> she plays that role pretty well. So no complaints. Um, Uncle Red is, a, an alcoholic, cigarette smoker, and overall a bad influence on Marty. His mother doesn't like it when he comes over, and he plays this, this pissed-off chronic alcoholic really well, especially in the beginning, like, during the first couple of visits. Um, and then, uh, his character development, though, is the building the bond of trust with his nephew when he tries to convince him of the werewolf. So, so even though Uncle Red doesn't necessarily believe that there's a werewolf after his nephew, he kind of does whatever Marty asks him to do, and that, that takes a lot. And so he really does play the role of a caring uncle who will do anything for his nephew, even if it's ridiculous, quite well. So I have no complaints about the acting there as, as well. So the rating there is a, is a flat 10 out of 10. Cinematography was uh, pretty good. Um, the the uh, you know like uh, no shaking or blurriness. The camera shots of the werewolf hiding in the bushes. I really love that. You know because the you can see the person he's gonna kill, and um, 
he's just hiding somewhere and and those shots were done so well um ominous and scary especially with the scary music uh it just worked really uh pleasantly w- with creating an ominous theme where you might feel a little scared first but then you see the werewolf and you're not scared because he's not a scary werewolf um the kill scenes were shot well and were incredibly graphic, which is, I, I like that because I love blood and gore. I like the werewolf costume too. I think it was really done nicely and those shots were very appealing. All right. Now, as I said, the music during the scenes where the werewolf is stalking his victims, it, it goes, dun, dun, dun. it's almost like Jaws as I, as I write here. Um, so it's it, it's very creepy, and um, yeah, so uh, I think it was done really well, whoever did the music and the cinematography, and so I have no complaints about either of those, and it's going to be 10 of 10 for that as well. Now we have the flaws. Okay. Um... As I already talked about, the kill count is too high in the first half. We don't need to get uh, back to that. But the major flaws are with the werewolf himself. Um, there are a couple of things I don't under- understand about the uh, the screenplay here that I don't understand. The first thing is, why does he kill his victims and just walk away? Most werewolves kill and at least partially eat their victims and then the victims become werewolves so this doesn't happen in this movie um i have a theory as as to why he just kills him and walks away uh maybe you agree with me maybe you don't um i think maybe there's a the purpose in this for this werewolf to become a werewolf is not necessarily to satisfy hunger or eat people but to let out aggressiveness that's stuck within him when he's not a werewolf. And so the aggressiveness comes out when he turns into a werewolf and he, and he kills all those victims. Sorry, we have a train coming through. Okay. And this is the thing that bothers me the most um, about the werewolf. He always walks very slow instead of ambushing his victims head on is he that out of shape okay so i told you the the scene with marty on the bridge and this is going to show this right here this scene let's be real life can get tough to say the least and especially without someone to talk to and as men
Okay, I don't know how well that played. Also, I don't own that video. That video was from Andrew Weber's YouTube channel, so thank you to Andrew Weber for having that scene posted. But if you <laughs> if you just look at everything about that scene, it's just like, oh my god, are you serious? So, yes, Marty was at the other end of the bridge, okay? So the werewolf had to walk a little bit fast. But he could have written... He could have ran and ambushed Marty before he shot that rocket into his eye. And see, that's the part I don't understand. Why doesn't he do that? I think the werewolf had plenty of time to get to Marty before he did that. Also, I forgot to mention Marty is crippled, which is why he's in that uh, silver bullet wheelchair that his Uncle Red built for him. Again, a symbol of how close Uncle Red and Marty are. That uh, Uncle Red basically built a motorcycle wheelchair for his nephew. Um, one th other thing I had a problem with was that Uncle Red gave him fireworks to shoot off in the middle of the night. With a potential killer running around. I always had a problem with that detail. So overall the werewolf is aggressive when he kills but he acts really stupid in the process. Um, overall, the werewolf is a poorly written character, in my opinion.